Right now here at 5 o'clock, another new twist of the ongoing case against the former Clark County, Indiana Sheriff Jamie Knoll and the former Scott County Sheriff Kenneth Hugh Banks. It's our top story. Hello, everyone. I'm Doug Profit. And I'm Shay McAllister. New documents show the Indiana Attorney General is suing to recover public funds related to the criminal charges against Knoll. Knoll has been charged with multiple felony charges, including theft, tax evasion, corrupt business practices, and ghost employment. The state of Indiana is now asking a judge to temporarily freeze Knoll's ability to sell any property, including his real estate properties, cars, other vehicles, clothing, jewelry, and artwork. They also want to freeze Knoll from using any cash, stocks, or bonds and bank accounts due to the possibility of there being public funds tied up in those accounts. Hubanks has not been criminally charged in this case. Moving on here today at 5 o'clock, it's going to be a big week next week. As Valhalla in eastern Jefferson County is already buzzing, crews are making their final preparations ahead of the PGA Championship. And right here at 5, we're bringing you the food and the story of the parking. A crowd of 200,000 is expected next week for one of golf's biggest draws, a major economic boost for Louisville. Isaiah Kim Martinez and Emma Gefter are showing us the efforts made to accommodate those guests. We take the tour by cart past the clubhouse at Valhalla. The signs impossible to miss of the legends who've won here. And not far away, these chefs work their magic at one of six main kitchens on site. We're going to do more food in, in three days here than a professional football stadium does in a year. <laughs> These folks are pros, as much as the players are. This job right here has had me do everything from chefing, driving carts, you name it, I do it at the golf tournament. Food's important. The transportation for an event of this size is just as vital. Shelbyville Road is sure to be a zoo when it comes to traffic for the PGA Championship, but you have homeowners all across this road near Valhalla who are trying to make this process easier. Hello. Since last Thursday, Claude Combest's phone. Yes, it is. Has been ringing off the hook. I've got spaces. He's owned this property just 50 yards from one of the course gates for more than 40 years before Valhalla Golf Club even existed. They can get out anytime they want to. And each time the major tournament comes to town, he opens up his couple acres of land for parking, selling spaces to fit as many as 75 cars at a time. To be clear, authorities are warning attendees walk-ins at or around Valhalla will not be allowed. And police say going on foot or parking on Shelbyville Road is both unsafe and not an option. The orange is the uh, parking areas. Combest tells me people know this, but regardless, they're reserving their spots anyway. Isaiah Kim Martinez, WHAS 11, on your side. And we know that starting this weekend, traffic around the golf course will be crazy. So here's our Sam Gabrielli with more on what you need to know if you're trying to get out to Valhalla or just try to get around town this weekend. The PGA Championships is coming to Valhalla Golf Club starting Monday, and it's expected to bring a lot of traffic to the east side of Jefferson County. Whether you're attending the tournament or just navigating a typical week, you need to be prepared for slowdowns on some key interstates. First, if you plan to attend the PGA Championships, you have to park at the Kentucky Expo Center. You can utilize the main gate, Gate 6, Gate 7, and follow the signs to PGA Public Parking. There will be a shuttle to and from Valhalla Golf Club. Because of that, access to I-65 and I-264 in anywhere near the Expo Center, the fairgrounds, and the airport will likely be limited. Uber, Lyft, and Z-Trip drivers need to be aware of this too. Most of the PGA Championship traffic will flow from I-65 to I-264 East, then shuttles will access I-64 East from I-264 and I-265 northbound. Shuttles will get from Shelbyville Road to Valhalla Golf Club using I-265 northbound. Expect delays and slow-going spots, especially around Shelbyville Road, stoplight traffic leading to Valhalla. Your best shot at avoiding the hassle is by taking I-65 or I-71 to the Gene Snyder, also known as I-265. I'm meteorologist Sam Gabrielli, WHAS 11 on your side.
Uh, expect delays right now if you're looking to get your piece of the PGA Championship, you're in luck. The PGA shops are open to the public for this weekend. The PGA shops are a Nike official outfitter, but there are 45 different brands you'll see out there. It's 50,000 square feet featuring more than 1,200 different products. The stores have well over 250 different hats, plus 50 checkout stations to make your shopping experience go by quicker. There will also be more than 700 volunteers on site to help. PJ officials say this is a very exciting time for them. Every time we come to Louisville, every time we come to Kentuckyana, we see that support and it helps us do what we do best. It creates an exciting atmosphere. It allows us to put on, put on this show mm -hmm. and then to see the people start coming in the gates for them to fully get to experience it after a 10 year break. Um, it's an exciting time. Open, open to the public. Again, the shops are open today through Sunday for the grand opening weekend, and they open at 9 a.m. and close at 6 p.m. Just remember, there's no public parking on site at Valhalla. Parking will be available for your visit to the shop by going to the Highview Baptist Church. That's nearby. It's right on Shelbyville Road, and there will be shuttles there to take you over to the nearby shops at Valhalla. But again, this is only through this weekend. We're going to have coverage for you from the course all next week. To get more about how to get to the tournament and to the shops, plus all about the players, text the word PGA to us at WHAS 11. Our number for the texting only is 502-582-7290. We'll send all this information right to your cell phone. And, of course, it's going to be important. Another week-long forecast, Shay, not just for a weekend like the first Saturday in May, but an entire week. And it is a little bit of some ups and downs there. Good news before we even get to PGA, mm -hmm. Mother's Day. Really yes. looking nice for all the moms. Gorgeous weekend. It's going to be very nice this weekend before things start to change for the PGA Championship Week. In fact, we can take a look at the first few days at least for that. I do think we'll see some showers beginning late in the afternoon on Monday. But Tuesday, looking like the wettest day of next week. 80% chance that we'll see showers and thunderstorms there. But temperatures, when it is dry, are going to be quite pleasant in the middle middle to upper 70s, so really not too hot and it shouldn't be too humid either for those practice rounds. Currently, winds are out of the west and northwest, uh, north northwest at about 10 miles per hour. That's helped keep our temperatures down today. We're only sitting at about the 70 degree mark at the moment, so very nice. Partly sunny skies, but we will see those skies begin to clear a bit more as we head deeper into the evening as they're moving from north to south here. Uh, upper 60s in the metro, upper 60s down in E-Town as well, and Evansville coming in at the moment at 70. 71 degrees. No rain associated with any of those clouds. We are going to stay clear on Max HD radar for most of the weekend, although we might have an isolated shower early tomorrow morning. More details on that will be coming up for the rest of your Friday night. Actually, we're going to see pretty comfortable conditions for us, but ahead, I'll let you know more about those rain chances that will be coming our way for next week. I'll break those down ahead. All right, Alden, thank you very much. This week, Clarksville police arrested two Louisville men for copper theft after pursuing them across the Ohio River. You've seen the results of the copper thieves across Louisville, long stretches of darkness on our interstates. Police are dealing with it all over. The thieves steal the copper wiring right out of the street lights. This case also involved a chase from the vacant Clarksville Plaza shopping center in southern Indiana and ended in Louisville's Portland neighborhood when the suspects crashed overnight. Ian Hardwit and photojournalist Jessica Farley discovered the case could be connected to more in Louisville. Clarksville police shared this photo with WHAS 11 of the copper wire they recovered after arresting two men suspected of stealing it all. They say the wire was ripped out of an empty shopping center. Our officers obviously pursued them uh, and when it got over into Louisville they did wreck out uh, into a drainage ditch. Clarksville police arrested the two men who ran on foot after crashing their utility truck. Jonathan Collins on the left and Clinton Woosley on the right face criminal charges for stealing the copper and resisting law enforcement. Clarksville's police chief believes they've gone as far as using the winch on the back of the truck to hoist themselves up into the air and pilfer the material from lights up on high. Clarksville police were on alert after they received a report last week of copper being stolen from the inside of the old Hobby Lobby off of the Lewis and Clark Parkway. And at least one of the light posts in the parking lot showed signs of tampering. Patrol officers say they noticed the two accused men at the empty shopping center early Thursday morning before a traffic stop led to the 2.30 a.m. chase. Detective Justice Kraft 
credits the patrol for its proactive work. And that really speaks to our patrol division taking the initiative, being in the area, being attentive, and doing a tremendous job in, in, in catching them. In this instance, police estimate half a million dollars worth of damage to the business. They suspect the total across Kentuckyana is even greater. We are working with other law enforcement agencies to kind of connect the dots, but it's a significant enough amount to where we're looking at almost a million dollars worth uh, if we combine our case with other cases in the area. LMPD confirmed the two departments are cooperating on this investigation. In Clarksville, Ian Hardwit, WHAS 11, on your side. Clarksville Police confirmed to us today they're building off this case and filing for search warrants that could lead to even more charges. A new developments this afternoon, the jockey of Sierra Leone will be fined for his actions during the Kentucky Derby. The Kentucky Horse Racing Commission ordered Tyler Gaffleone will have to pay $2,500 for touching a rival horse during the final stretch. The fine will not change the results of the race. If the jockey doesn't pay in 30 days, his license could be suspended.